Hey, we're back over here at the desk. Well, the couches. Uh, <laughs> and we're joined by Valen after G2 picked up the win against Cloud9. And at some point, you got to stop, you know, messing up my heart because it's just a little too much going on. My heart can't take it, Valen. <laughs> it's a G2 way, man. We, we're not good enough yet to just close these games clean. We're, we're still trying to improve <laughs> to get to that point, but at least we're closing them, so I'm happy. Yeah, after uh, the experience in, in, in Shanghai, did you feel like that, uh, you know, help the team kind of become a little bit more like cohesive and uh, yeah. especially after all that you guys went through out there. Definitely. I mean, not even comp like competition aside, just being in a hotel room with the boys grinding day in and day out. Like it kind of builds that team cam a bit when you travel internationally because you got to do everything together. Right. It's, yeah. it's a foreign country. So we, we were brought together. Um, so that definitely helped the team cam. In terms of in-game, I think getting those reps versus the top teams in the world and even getting some big wins for us against the top teams really boost the confidence. And it's like, hey, guys, like if we stick to our plan, if we continue playing how we're supposed to, which is like for us, it's just making plans, keep the comms high, keep the energy high, we can win any match. So it was like a proving tournament for us, I would say. Um, and Show I'm, today, though. Yeah, I'm very grateful for that experience because I think it shaped me more in all aspects. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Do you feel content with the result then, or is there still a level of frustration because you were just like a couple meters away from the finish line? Yeah, I would say, I mean, top three is definitely a, was like a stepping stone for us, so I am happy that we at least made it that far. But the competitor inside of me makes me want to lift that trophy, of course. Um, I was frustrated after the Gen G game because that was a game I felt like we could have had in our hands. Like, I remember I had a crucial mistake. We had some, like, crucial mistakes that when you watch it back, it just, like, yeah, irks you. you. Yeah, yeah because yeah. We, we, we know that if we didn't have that, maybe we could have won. I would say the last day we got completely outclassed, so prop, props to Heretics. But, um, yeah, I, I want to lift this trophy once, man. I, I, it's, it's always a dream to do that. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. So looking at this Cloud9 game and uh, con considering the uh, time and, and preparation he had to have, we were kind of shocked because you guys were the ones that were taking risks. You, you implemented the Neon. Is that something that we're going to be seeing a little bit more from G2? Um, yeah, I would say so. I mean, not to leak too much, of but <laughs> we, we have been uh, practicing hard. You know, we, yeah. we haven't taken much, much of a break. I mean... We reset the sleep schedule early when we first came back. But besides that, like, we had both weekends we were practicing. Like, we had no days off because we knew that we were behind on time. These teams were watching us, prepping us all this time that we're in Shanghai, plus a new patch drop. So, you know, it's been a, it's been a rough week. I know the boys are, like, tired and stressed out, and so am I, to be honest. But coming out with this win today was big for us. Yeah. And as, once we reach this goal, now we can take an off day tomorrow and maybe look revisit the comps and, you know, just get that rest that we really need. Yeah. For sure. I, I, I think that it goes without saying that you guys have been through the ringer. Uh, you, you're, you're feeling a little bit of that fatigue that we have seen other teams kind of deal with before. Um, now that you're in this position, though, and there was a discussion that was had about uh, G2 being the, you know, like the best team in America's mm -hmm. right now. Is that how you feel currently or do you feel like there's still just more? No, I think we're still a bit behind to be the best team. Um, I, you know, we are great and we, we've shown good results, but the international event doesn't define us. You know, even if we had a bad event, it doesn't define us. We had a good one. It doesn't really define us. We're, we just have our heads focused on trying to continue to win. And until I reach that trophy, I'm never going to say I'm the best. You know, right now I would say 100 Thieves because they're the stage one champs. Um, and, you know, we're having these slow starts and hiccups in maps. Like you saw the icebox look pretty bad. You know, the calls feel good and the game feels like we're playing it correctly, but sometimes we're just making these uncharacteristic mistakes, I would say. And we're still trying to nail that down. And once we can do that, maybe I'll be confident to call us the best in the world, or best in America's. All right. Yeah. Yeah. For Anything sure. Else? I wanted to ask about the icebox in specific, because for a while in stage one, that was a go-to map for you guys. Yeah. That you were finding win after win after win on. And then I think there was, if I remember correctly, a game against Loud at the very end of the season where they had a convincing win against you guys. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just seemed like you haven't been able to remedy um, you know, the, the issues that are occurring. What's kind of your take on that map right now and what's going wrong, what you're going to try to fix? It's, it honestly is it's hard to say because in practice, the map feels good for us. And we watch back the VODs and, you know, we always come up with new game plans or ideas on how to play the comp again, or not again, but in different ways to not be readable because we have shown it a lot, uh, the double controller, double initiator. But, you know, I, 
I honestly, it's hard to give you the answer because I gotta go rewatch the VOD and see what happened this time. I feel like every time with this map, it's something different for us. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, versus Loud, they just were finding um, holes in our open, so they were able to get 5v4s like almost every single round. This time they just exploited B and we're down 08. It, it's a new problem every time, but I think with that, we're just gonna keep trying to nail it down until we start winning on that map again. Cause to be honest, I'm comfortable with teams picking it. They look at our results and say, oh, this is the worst map for G2, but I'm, I'm confident with, with our map, with, with that map still. So we just gotta see what we gotta do. I wanted to ask you actually, sorry, I've just been listening very intently. I've just been like writing this shit down. <laughs> sorry, excuse me. It's okay, no, writing still it a player, down we'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> just player to player, but um, I wanted to ask you directly, cause I think we all come kind of come to our own conclusions and think about like what y'all's play style is. And I've always seen you guys as like a very complete team that has many win conditions. Like, you know, there are teams that are very form dependent on like pop-offs, like individual pop-offs, like this guy needs to get a 3K in this round and then mm. suddenly you win the game. But for me, I've always seen you guys as a very complete team, but I kind of wanted to hear it directly from you, like what you think your team's play style is, especially with IC as well. Yeah, I mean... Not to leak too much, but... Yeah, well, humbly, I feel like we don't have... Or not that we don't have, but we don't play to the conditions of like we have this star player that is going to fry. We We feel like we're all equal like skill, if that makes sense. Um, we don't put anyone on a pedestal, like this is our star, we have to play around him. And that kind of forces us to play a very team dependent Valorant. Um, you know, humbly, I feel like there are star players that can take over games. And, you know, we have those moments as well, but it's not like a, that's not our identity. And so we make sure that our wins are all five contributing. Um, and with that, you know, you got to nail out all the protocols like you got to be very tight in your opens because you're not just sending one guy out to go kill everyone. You got to yeah. your post plants have to be very different. You can't run the same inside post plant every time. You got to push more. You got to take more space and then maybe you could fall off. Like we, we go through a lot of um, team based protocols that we try to implement from barrier drop until the bomb explodes. So mm -hmm. I would say that. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, honestly. It feels like you guys are the sum of all your parts. Yeah, yeah. Than yeah. like one part being bigger. Like what you said, right? You don't really put anyone on a pedestal. Everyone's kind of just contributing equally to this team, right? Yeah, for sure. And I think you see it with our play style, of course, because we play very pack heavy, uh, very pack into insert. We don't like just having a guy fight by himself or even Cloud9's a team who will like buy Oxy a gun on round two. And we don't like to take those risks and... You know, maybe it's good for some teams, but for us, I would say we just, yeah. you know, focus on our, our team play. All right. Hey, you know what? I mean, you guys got the win today. Yeah. <laughs> That's what matters, right? We do have a question from uh, Twitch chat. This one's from Mothman Moore. I know Mothman. What's up, boy? How you doing? Uh, with huge game changes, how difficult is it to rematch a team knowing they can play completely different than the last time? Which, you know, for C9, you guys have met before. Um, so, yeah. Uh, how was that for play out? I mean, my, my most recent experience was playing Heretics three times. Yeah. And Third time had to be a charm for them at that point. You know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think rematching a team is very difficult as a competitor. And I'm sure Mel can also attest to this. Like when you lose a match, especially when it's close, when you rewatch the VOD, you're like, dude, if we fix this little one mistake, we could have won the game. Yeah. And so when a team loses to you in a close fashion and they can rewatch the VOD and say, dude, if we fix this one thing, we can beat them. While on our side, it feels like our stuff was working. Like our stuff was good. We won the game. Maybe, you know, I always, even in wins, try to learn a lesson mm -hmm. from it. But um, yeah, it just, the other team feels more confident in the rematch. And also going into a new patch, like the question asked, yeah, it is difficult because we have not as much time to implement new stuff. They have all the footage on us because we just competed and they can swap up comps. So we went into this game with the mindset of we have to just focus on us 100%. We yeah. can't focus too much on them, anti-stratting, whatever, because they could run anything. And so that was a big focus for us, just nailing down each part of our game to where there's no gaps, there's no mistakes that can be hap uh, to happen. And of course, there's still going to be some, right? But that, that's the mindset when you go into these matches of you don't know what they're going to play, so you just got to full focus on you, and you have to live adapt. So that's where you see the IGLs have to step up even more. Yeah. The team has to step up even more because you don't know what's going to happen to you, and when it happens live, you only have so many rounds to actually fix it. Um, and I would say that happened to us on Lotus, actually, because they ran a double initiator breach gecko, and we haven't seen that. We haven't competed against that, so yeah. that was a match we had to just live adjust and 
it all worked out. Yeah, indeed, it did. Let's take a look at the standings and see where we are right now with G2's win against Cloud9. They should be inching a little bit further up, which they are in Let's fifth go. place in top six. Remember, you want to be in that top six because that means you can make your way over to the playoffs. C9, though, is going to take a step down a bit as they are five and, uh, five and two, excuse me, courtesy of that loss against G2. So, yeah, there's certainly been some interesting movement, man. Uh, want to get your thoughts, though, Valen, on the weekend. I know you were watching a few of the games. Anything that caught caught your eye? I mean, what didn't catch my eye, right? We saw we saw Furia close out a 2-0 versus 100 Thieves, who are the defending Stage 1 champs, and I don't think anyone was expecting that. Yeah. But for them, you know, coming with a new player, new game plan, they kind of, they looked like they revived themselves a bit. So I am uh, excited to see Furia be a better contender in this Stage 2. And the second game, I think people were surprised that EG won, but I, I always known that EG is a good team, even though they had a shaky stage one. Yeah. They're a strong team with really good chemistry in and out the server. So that result wasn't too surprising for me. Oh. Real recognize real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you were seeing Jojima playing that neon, Ooh. was I giving you some ideas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the round that he stunned the guy, backward slid. Dude, yeah, that was crazy. Guy. Everyone saw that, that was one, nasty right? work. That was nasty. Yeah. That was, but, broke that dude's ankles. Yeah. It was so bad. He was like, what are you even supposed to do in that? It's just spray. <laughs> just like, oh, you known something. for that stuff. Yeah. Like, this patch is really going to play into his hand, the ISO, the neon. So I'm excited to see that guy pop off. He's my boy. Yeah, it's awesome stuff there. Okay, well, folks, you saw the schedule as well. The matches are going to be on the horizon. Next week, though, we're going to have a massive week for VCT Americas. One week that someone could say, <clears throat> is super. That's right. Uh. <laughs> Whoa! We got the explosion back. Super week is back. Explosion? Yes! You want to try it? Say super week. Super week. <laughs> See? That's it. We got it. We got the explosion. It's a great time to be alive, people. But in any case, though, folks, we're going to have five straight days of action, and all of it starts on Saturday. We have Evil Geniuses taking on Furia, which... Whoo, whoo, I'm excited for that one. Yep. And then we'll get your crews out because crew's going to be taking on Sentinels. Oh, I feel uh, bad for Alejandro. Game. He's going to have to pick his side there. I've been uh, looking forward to seeing crew again. Yeah, it's going to be exciting, folks. You don't want to miss it. Super Week is on the horizon. Forget it. I'm going to say it a million times. Super Week is Super back. Week. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Take care, folks. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you.